Niji Sanji is getting flop after flop with Mario Kart and other things. A Mythic Talents member uh, is being accused of scamming an artist and doing chargebacks and so many more things on this episode today. The Mario Kart tournament that, they, that was just done last night, as of this writing and everything of this, um, they have not done as well as people would expect. I mean, 8K is nothing to shake a stick at. It's something that every VTuber would wish to have. But when you have dozens of participants and supposedly, you know, your EN official channel doing this, you would expect that a tournament this big would have more viewers. When you had 8552, uh, not even reaching 10k, that's basically what Narissa and her sister play Mario Kart did. And we found out Anarissa has a fork tongue and can do potato chip ASMR. It's a very negligible stream. Mooms karaoke, casually pulling 13k at the same time. Maybe they ran out of money to buy CCV numbers. This made me realize a good portion of the 8k is probably botted and her needy sisters using alt accounts to inflate viewer numbers. Without bots and alt accounts, the viewership would probably be embarrassingly alarmingly low. There are people who do that. Uh, it's never good because it gives uh, false numbers out there. It's never good. Never good. I love to ask Anidhi Sanji, but let's not make stuff up on uh to shit on them. There's already plenty of real stuff. The sad fact is a decent number of people who are either uninformed or don't care about the situation and go on as normal. It could be botted. I don't think it was. Personally, I don't think it was. Because it's a it's the official Yen channel. So I think there are gonna be enough people to watch the official Yen channel for it to get eight thousand. If it had eighty thousand, that'd be like holy crap, maybe that is botted because I don't know of any Nidhi Sanji Yen thing that has had eighty thousand. If I had eighty thousand, then I'd be like, Yeah, you know, maybe there's some stuff going on there. Because no one cares anymore when they pair social needy sisters, which, which are negligible. They hit 10k at one point, but not for long. There's a few POV streams, but even adding those up, it looks really bad as this type of thing. Added together, it's almost 27k in total, which frankly, for a branch event, is awful. That's what people are saying, it's just bad. Shout out curiosity, we don't know how many CCVs there were on Toa's channel during Hollow Life's annual New Year's Mario Kart journey. 141, 141k and 182 peak. So peak, yeah, that's the difference. Um, of course, that's JP. JP's going to have different numbers, but still... Some EN members were in there as well for the New Year's one. So it's not like just JP was in there. Uh, but even some EN stuff will get higher CCV and higher even peak than what this one seems to have got. So they're not doing so well. That's going to be shown here as well. Uh, they're also getting downvoted. That's because of the stuff that's going on right now. I don't think it's really indicative of how bad EN's doing. Necessarily, it's just it is indicative of uh, people just not taking their crap anymore. People not appreciating the crap anymore. That type of thing. It's not a negligible number. Nope, it's not. Obviously, from a mixture of rampant haters, ex genuine ex-fans, and upset, I imagine. Yeah, haters and stuff like that is what I think. So, I think it's mainly just, you know, a lot of people are hating on them right now. This isn't such a big number. The big number is the 8552, because that, even at 10k max, like I said, while still good, for being the number one or number two in the world for uh, VTubers, that is not a good number, period. This is kind of a big thing that's been going on, and... I wanted to talk about it because it is also a part of the VTuber community. Not everything is about Nidhi Sanji. There are things going on outside of Nidhi Sanji that we need to hear about. This artist, Laura, alleges that mythic talent VTuber Nalithia has performed hundreds of dollars in chargebacks on emotes that have been delivered after she refused demands for an unreasonable number of edits. Now, here we go. To all my clients and fellow artist friends, the Nalithia VT filed a chargeback of 676 against me, claiming that the emotes she received were damaged and unusable. She belittled my artwork and refuses to acknowledge the work I did for her, saying I was lazy. She continues on, and that I didn't communicate properly, that it isn't my fault that she's not pleased with the final work. That it is my fault. Um, if you worked with me before, you know I always communicate multiple times and request feedback to ensure I deliver the best art possible. If you are an artist, you know you need to establish limits and that you can't keep consenting when clients start requesting endless revisions because they failed to explain themselves and what they wanted from the services provided. The client has been asking me for edits repeatedly and made me recolor and separate the layers of the emotes commissioned three times already because every time I sent her the final update, she had new correction she forgot to mention. Now, that's just abusive when it comes to that. Yes, a lot of artists will allow you to do corrections, maybe one or two, but doing them every single time a new email comes out, is just too much uh if you're not happy with it and you want too many corrections some artists rightfully so charge you after like the second i think the second or third correction because it's more work on their end they're not going to be doing it for free now that i refuse to keep working on a commission delivered on january 13th since i was not compensated for all these edits i did them as a courtesy to her i explained it in my tos my terms of service you have a limited amount of corrections which is true that's the way it's supposed to be. Almost every artist I've worked for has that. And every artist afterwards has had that. Because there are people who will give ask you for 15 different edits, 15 different things. 
and it takes time as an artist to get all those done. And it is unfair to someone as an artist to not uh, pay them, compensate them for extra hours worked. She now claims that my work is lazy, that I didn't deliver the commission, and basically making a criminal, making me a criminal for not keeping up with the abuse and the unreasonable requests. I delivered the art commissioned, and what is criminal is to file a chargeback against me and completely erase all of my hard work and the time I spent on it. But I guess that's to be expected from someone who attacked other artists in the past and complained about their prices. I don't like drama, but unfortunately things got out of hand, and it's important for me to share my experience so other artists might take precautions if they consent to work with someone that might file a chargeback against you on a whim. Of course, uh, for those things, put it in your terms of service that uh, once the artwork is done, you know, try to put some wording in there to prevent chargebacks to say, you know, all of the art is final um, unless we agree otherwise, you know, that type of thing. There's certain legal things you can put in there to prevent uh, unwarranted chargebacks. Now, if there's, you know, you didn't deliver something, yes, a chargeback will happen. Hey, Laura, I have a question. Uh, trust me, this will help you a lot in the PayPal case. The person states that the work is not usable. Was it emotes or a VTuber? If it's an emote, submit and inform us of the type of file it is. Also screenshot the section in Twitch that uh, that states what type of files. If you have a partner, emotes are accepted automatically. You can then record yourself showing the emotes do work. If it is a VTuber, record yourself using it as showing all the stuff she asked for being aside. You know, that type of thing. So that's always good. And it really sucks. Uh, considering they're pretty well known for looking down on artists and being extremely toxic about cost versus what they receive, expecting hours of work for free because you're the one who's too expensive. You don't deserve more. You deserve the minimum because it's what I can afford. Uh, yeah, people are really, you know, knocking them. Another person says, this is just a cherry on top for me to confirm that Nalithia should be avoided. I knew Nalithia when she was really small, like average 20 viewers. She seemed so sweet and pure and genuine. Then I got screwed over by my agency, Aurora Live VR. And Alithia tried to blame me and blocked me and talked about me behind my back. It seems she isn't as sweet as she portrays. I'm so sorry you had to deal with this type of disrespect and abuse of your goodwill. She responds, all I've been hearing lately is that she's rude to artists, she's mean to other VTubers, and even abuse her friends IRL. I don't know how someone like this can still have support. Uh, people, you know, it's parasocialism, like severe parasocialism to give people support like this. It's too much. Um, it's with a quick glance, you'll see you put a lot of effort into your work. I'm sorry you had to experience that. Dealing with PayPal and chargebacks can be such a pain in the butt. It really can. It really is a big pain in the butt. I'm really sorry that you had to deal with this thing. Um, if you're watching this, of course, a lot of people are, you know, doing these things. And from what I saw on a post previously, uh, she had actually used them a bit for, you know, that type of stuff. Cause Laura goes beyond everything. This is basically the, the type of thing she does. Here's more uh, things, and here's a person saying, she removed all the emotes from her channel. I saved this in case you needed as proof of them. You know, basically, she used the emotes originally. She had used all of the emotes. So if they didn't work, why did she use them? You know, this is not good, especially if you're part of a large organization like um, Mythic Talent. You know what I mean? It's not good at all. This is more of a flub, but it's still kind of funny. And the fact that they couldn't spell congratulations correctly on this whole thing. They, they didn't even do spell check. They didn't do anything. I understand that a lot of these people may not be native English speakers. And it's understandable that they're going to make mistakes. But if you're going to be doing something on a professional level, which Nidhi Sanji is at least trying to do, or at least you would assume they'd be trying to do, you would have a spell checker that is at least an uh, English speaker or in some way check for mistakes, as I believe even Hollow Live and Cover does that. Uh, most even small indies like Vispo and others, I'm pretty sure, do that. Even though they may not be English speakers, but if they have an English audience, they're going to do that. Now, it's congratulations. Uh, yes, it's one letter, but it makes it look like amateur hour. That's what I'm getting at. That's what a lot of people are getting at here. Certainly speaks to non-English speaking management. Fantastic self-report. Um, yeah, pretty much it speaks to non-English management. And like I said, if they're not English speakers, I can understand. Absolutely. But uh, they are a professional company. They are a large corporation. They are the second largest or if not the largest in Japan right now in the VTubing sphere right now. They should pretty much make sure that these things get spell checked before it comes out. For a much hyped event, even a typo prominently displayed like this, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't asset management something you plan and execute a long time in advance? I sure would. Feels a lot like what Niji Sanji's priorities are. Yeah, it's just amateur hour pretty much on this thing. A mistake like this is something that can happen. You just make it up the picture on the spot. It's like they happen here. But the project is planned since December. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it should have been at least two months since it was delayed because of Lance's termination. In the case, I would just prepare a picture for everything. Need enough time to double check. Team A win, Team B win, promo mainstream. Exactly. Just make one for everybody. Like just have the same background and just put every, you know, you have the PNGs of everybody. You can add them in depending on the team and just have everything set up for whatever team wins 
and then just add their PNGs in there. Shouldn't be so hard for that to happen. Plus L so far away from R. Okay, make that mistake. It's 100% non-English speaking management making this at least last minute. They spelled it how it sounded to them, not how it's actually spelled, which is a mistake that non-English speakers can make. Like I said, it's an innocent mistake, but it being the Sanji, it is, it just really does seem um, amateur. And here's another little, little just tidbit, just little fun times. Um, unbelievable. Even Pecora knows how to spell unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> like it's just, they, even they know how to do it. Amazing, fantastic, wonderful, super, pardon? LMAO. Turned into another meme like negligible, there's no favoritism. Yeah, this whole thing is just not looking good for them. It's just showing its amateur hour over there. A little bit of uh, meme action here. Of course, trying to keep things levity, to keep some levity going. Uh, it says, you break the rules, you become the hero. I break the rules, I become the enemy. That doesn't seem fair. The Kanashiro and Shindo ratio. Yes, Shindo seems to become the enemy. Uh, look at Kanashiro, of course. The reason why is because he is one of the favored children. He's one of the favored uh, Luxian members. So, of course, being one of the favorites, you are, of course, going to be uh, allowed to do to make a little mistakes here and there. Shindo Raitio is the case is much, much more heinous than Luca. Oh, God. OK, the Shindo thing. Yeah, uh, if that is true, if what this person says here is true, then, yes, uh, Shindo is, of course, going to be the enemy. Of course, he's not going to be seen as a good person. Uh, one tried to actually become a hentai protagonist. I have no clue how he managed to get hired in the first place when he had records of being a harasser in the past. Yes, Shindo is uh, from what I'm seeing here. He deserved his, uh, his Shindo Raito deserved what he got. Cases like an effing blank participating in a dating show on TV. Screen or background checks would help. Um, firing him in a hurry may have been any cutter's act, act, act of conscience. After that, download of adult. Oh, God. Uh, that, uh, that. Yeah, he's done bad stuff. Perhaps very problematic, especially before the big VTuber boom, since he quickly dug his own grave because he was known as being obsessed with having blank with women. He's needed Sanji variant if he told me Chris. Holy crap. That is really bad stuff. That's why this happened. So it's not so much a bad thing here. Uh, Shindo Raito actually did some uh, bad stuff. So we'll leave it at that. Here's another little meme piece. This one I think is a little bit lighter than the last one that I did. Of course, here's a comparison based on what people do. Right here it says, just wanted to know. Pekora Celebration Music Video just featured a butterfly symbol. Uh, it symbolizes Rushia from Hollow Life, who used to be a part of Hollow Life. Person, this is the appropriate response. Oh, you're sweet. Down here is... So Southern Tosky's last cup of coffee just hit and this project featured graduated terminated members of Mr. Anina. Hello, human resources. That's pretty much the way Nidhi Sanji treated it. They should not have treated it that way because it wasn't that serious, but that's exactly the way they treated it. This whole meme becomes hilarious if you remember the fact that Rusia was indeed terminated and Mr. Anina both graduated. Yeah, but there's a sad truth about terminated VTubers. Once the contract has ended, it means that all things in the channels will be privated. All those years of hard work of the agency VTuber will be permanently gone to waste. But at least companies like Cover won't be pursuing legal charges against the terminated, although there are rights to do so, or slandering them or harassing them to the point of mental health breakdowns, which is what Niji Sandy did with Selene Tatsuki. In which case, she unfortunately has mental issues of her own, the drama, she does, and of course, leave her in peace. Says that she actually made an attempt. She really needs to step away from the internet and take a long break. I agree with that. Sometimes you just need to step away from the internet. Sometimes you just need to take a little bit of a break for yourself, for your own well-being. Better example would be Idol Showdown, which has Coco, and it became supported by Cover by joining the Hollow Indie program. I sure hope that Tekken 8 would even feature costumes of Hollow Alive members, even graduated or terminated members, so they aren't a burning memory left behind going forward. Well, they're not fan projects. They're official projects by the talent. But yeah, absolutely, I think it should be fine. Um, but yeah, I think from what I know, people on the third gen still talk about Russia. Uh, people of the first or second gen still talk about Mel. Kirikoko is not a forbidden subject. Uh, you know, the cover has been making it so that they can still talk about their former friends. Why? Or their current friends. Because a lot of them are still friends with the people who, who you know, they aren't a part of the organization anymore. Why do they do that? Specifically because they know that if they try to restrict people or the the livers, the uh, people who make their content from, you know, talking about friends, it ends up becoming an unhappy situation, an unhappy place and morale drops, which means production drops. Uh, just from a simple company standpoint, that is what I think is going on. Taking a look at something else. This just seems wrong, in my opinion, at least when it comes to the DJP. It looks like they, of course, did a 3D debut thing for NN Millie. But um, it's like when Nidhi JP announced Rosemary's Patrick's 3D, they didn't say anything. Raymo also didn't say anything. But NN and Millie are kind of kissing butt. It seems kind of weird because it was a nice surprise, this whole message here. Of course, you're going to thank the staff. You may thank them in, in private, etc. But this is kind of just trying to fluff up what's happening, I guess. 
trying to fluff up the fact that staff is doing something for them. But the, the, the bot, the last part, really nice surprise. Isn't that what's supposed to happen every single time you have a big event like a 3D? 3D is a big event. When you get your first 3D, when you get your 3D model, when you're alive 2D, when you get your 3D model, it is a humongous thing. So why is this a surprise? It shouldn't be a surprise. Surprising Ethereum with a promo. It should be having a promo. This also marks something bad in the Disanji. The fact that talents don't ever expect to be promoted. At least that's what it seems like here. And of course, we know Millie and Anna, at least from what we know now, are, um, you know, very much on Team Nidhi Sanji. But this makes it seem weird how it's a surprise. Maybe it was bad timing. Maybe it was bad uh, wording. But the whole surprise thing gets me. Didn't know I had a promo. Isn't that, isn't that supposed to be staff's job, period? But hey, at least they seem happy. Actually, you're right. They're thankful that they're being advertised by their own company. WTF, yeah. And a million, any color will, will match. They're never escaping the click allegations. I don't know why, but for some reason, I get the same vibes from those tweets that I got from the black stream. Not the slandering ones, but the you better do what we say kind of vibes. I can't even really say, but it just feels like off thanking your employer for doing their job one even for millie and and, and enna too especially since it's something that needs does for all 3d debuts i've seen a clip of drunk enna saying she doesn't want to go back to retail i assume that's mainly them trying to kiss as much ass that they can get so they don't get fired pretty much drunk enna i knew you blanks would replace us so easily as soon as there are like an effing new members you guys go and make and if you leave us, my God, better rigging, better models, better everything. You know, Nidhi Sanji grows. We just go and going to be forgotten. I'm Jim three man. You forget about me in three months. Probably going to forget about us one day. Don't want to go back to retail. Pretty clear, Nidhi Sanji livers do not have high self-esteem. It's that whole feeling of you are nothing without us. You are nothing if Nidhi Sanji doesn't push you out there. That's a feeling they give all their livers. Every former liver pretty much has, has kind of said that you know they felt like they couldn't do anything outside really shows the internal corporate mindset and the mindsets of the talents especially disturbing when it really has shown different hollow myth has not been forgotten face connect gen one is thriving be shoujo is still strong doki mint and the other xnity sanji livers are kicking butt <clears throat> if i were to spawn to enna being forgotten does not seem to be a vtuber thing as it's more Niji's internal corporate strategy. Cannot possibly be a surprise, 3D doesn't happen overnight. And where is a 3D Pomo after all these years? Too late. Of course, they had to pat themselves on the back. You know, all these things, it's like, it just seems weird to me. It really does seem weird to me that uh, they're saying this about their own company, who should actually be the ones promoting them. Like every company, every organization should promote their talent, especially when it's big things like 3D. But I guess Niji Sanji just wants them to feel like they are nothing. Thank you for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe and all that other fun stuff. Let me know what you think down below. Uh, take a look at my socials also in the description. My Discord server is a wonderful place that I want you guys to be able to enjoy and have fun in. And of course, take a look at your screen because there's going to be something there that you might enjoy. Thank you.